Good evening, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church, rector and pastor there. And I'm hoping you've had a great day, just like I have. It's been a busy one, but the sun is shining here in western Kentucky, and it's been a delight uh, on nearly 70-degree weather. Today we are celebrating, uh, as well on this fourth day of March, the festival day and commemoration of Paul Coffey. I had been pronouncing it today as a coffee, uh, as part of a French, but it's coffee. I'll tell you a little bit more about this amazing Native American uh, in Upper State New York. Uh, I'll tell you in, in just a few moments. Let us slow down our, our time and invite the Lord to be with us as we go to sleep tonight. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence. We are on page 127 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 127. <clears throat> the Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all of our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 100, found on page 729 in your Book of Common Prayer, also found in your Holy Scriptures. Psalm 100. Please join me in reciting this psalm out loud, or in the silence of your own meditation. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue with a passage from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another and with anyone has a compliment against a complaint against one another. Forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you, so as to almost must be forgiven. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of, of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude and in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
As I was saying tonight, we and today we've been celebrating the festival day in commemoration of Paul Coffey. He was born uh, to as a member of the uh, Shinnecock tribe in on March fourth, seventeen fifty seven. Paul Coffey was uh, converted to Christianity in his early twenties and was ordained to the Presbyterian Church. He became a most a famous preacher and missionary to the native communities around the present day uh, Mastic Beach at Hampton Bays and the Manitowoc all in all, all on Long Island, New York. He was best known in his name was Priest Paul. Coffee was instrumental in working with and, sur and for the survival of all native tribes. He demonstrated particular gift in bringing together strong witnesses to the Christian faith and, and continued dialogue to help bring traditional natives and, and blending the both with their beliefs. He was an amazing uh, Native American uh, who was very diplomatic in his speaking with people, and he helped even establish places of spiritual uh, places of refuge uh, for Native tribes and even to this day, uh, many of those uh, still happen on uh, what's called the ceremonial June meeting of the Shinnecock uh, tribe. Christian worship happens, traditional Native American uh, tribal day, and even to this day, he's considered was one of the most eloquent speakers of his time. He's also mentioned in Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin, as uh, which was a book for anti-slavery, which was also something that Paul Coffey helped try to work on uh, for Native tribal people. Priest Paul was buried on a tiny plot uh, in Canoe Place in Hampton Bays. His historical grave marker is still present there, even though the Long Island Railroad um, disrupted some, several of those markers. And on his marker, it said this, humble and pious, indefa indefatigable, and a testifying of the gospel of the grace of God. He finished his course with, the, with joy on March 7th, 1812, at the age of 55 and three days. We give thanks for Paul Coffey's uh, amazing mission work uh, for the uh, Society of New York promulgation of the, of, of the gospel, as it was known back then. And we give thanks for all of you who uh, spread the good news of Jesus Christ to others. Yesterday we were celebrating the Methodist with John and Charles uh, Wesley. Today the Presbyterian Church is, remind, is a reminder of the great Christian faith and witness uh, to the Shinnecock tribes and to uh, our uh, communities uh, of the Northeast. Tonight, I hope you go to bed knowing that God is witness is with us too. Just as Paul talks about in Colossians and our psalmist from Psalm 100, Paul is reminding us that if we do things with love, all things can, be, can happen. Miracles can happen. Seeking love above all things to help spread the gospel message is the gospel message. Amen. We continue our prayers now. Please turn back to page 132, page 132. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together, my sisters and brothers, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. We'll use the traditional version on the left column. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this day. Almighty God, who empowers evangelists and preachers, help us to proclaim your word with power, like your servant Paul Coffey, that more might come to your a deeper life in you, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please turn with me now to page 387 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 387, Prayers of the People, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. We pray, O Lord, in thanksgiving for all of our brothers and sisters in the Christian faith, that we may all be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We give thanks for the example of Paul Coffey and missionaries and clergy of his stature and for the Native American communities, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, we especially pray, Lord, for all those who are suffering from the uh, corona, coronavirus. We especially ask you to be with the, the thousand people who were contracted the virus today in our Commonwealth and for the 15 people here in our, our county. We pray, Lord, for all of our doctors and nurses who are caring for them. And we ask your blessing to be with them, especially if any are in the hospital and those who are awaiting test results. We especially ask and give thanks, Lord, for those who are being vaccinated and for the vaccinations that are starting to pick up throughout our commonwealth and our nation. We pray, Lord, for those who are ill, for those who are awaiting surgeries. We ask you to be with uh, Lori Copeland as she prepares for her surgery next week, for Charles Turok, who's on hospice, for Teresa Wilson, for my sister, Mary Jo Hartung, who's uh, recovering from surgery. We pray for Nancy Fowler Black, for my nephew, John Ulick. We pray for Liz Story. We pray for J Reverend John Allen, for my neighbor, Faye, and for Jimmy, who was taken off of life support. We pray, Lord, for Reverend Nick Yeager. We pray for all those who are in assisted living and nursing facilities, especially at Rivercrest, the lakes, and for Gaither Suites. We pray for those who are at Episcopal Church Homes in Louisville. We pray for those at Parkview and at Heritage Manor. I'd like to remember especially today all those who are battling cancer. I'd like to pray for Jim Zelmer, for Sherry Ulick, my sister-in-law, for Reverend Libby Wade, for Reverend Dorothy Hartzog, for Kelly Curtis Walker, for Tommy and Patty, and for Sam Wittes. We pray, Lord, for all those who are uh, taking care of those who are receiving chemotherapy or radiation treatment. For those who are in remission, we give thanks. We ask you, Lord, to send your healing touch upon them and all those who are suffering today, especially those with anxiety or depression and are suffering because of too much uh, virtual meetings. We ask you, Lord, to be with counselors and therapists and doctors and nurses. Bless them, Lord, for all the hard work that they are doing to help bring your healing presence to others. That they and all those who are, uh, are he trying to find healing, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give through the departed eternal rest. We pray, Lord, for Pat Broken Hot Bro. We pray for uh, Rodell uh, Blaylock, all who passed away today and this past week and, and this week. We pray, Lord, for the 28 people and one person here in our county who passed away today because of COVID-19. 
that we pause for a moment and remember all of our loved ones, and especially these who just recently passed and their families, as we pause for a moment and remember their sacred and wonderful presence in our lives. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We give thanks, O oh God, for people like Paul Coffey. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for the blessings of those who are in our lives and who are our blessings to us, especially those who celebrated a birthday this week, especially Julie Harris and Nancy McKinney. We ask your blessing upon our police officers, fire people, first responders, and all those who are making our lives a lot easier, especially our city workers and our teachers and our teachers' aides. We give thanks, Almighty, Almighty God. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. If you'd like to post a prayer for someone or an event that you have going on in your life, please do so and I'll, I'll come back and pray with you in my own personal time. We thank you, Lord, for all those blessings. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Turning back to page 100 now in 134, page 134 at the bottom of that page, let us continue our Compline prayers. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you've had a restful sleep, and I hope this has been a very uh, comforting time for you in your own prayer as you uh, prepare for your rest this evening. I hope you awake tomorrow refreshed and ready to go for another beautiful day for Friday. Please uh, keep me in your prayers and the family of uh, Rudell um, Bla uh, Blaylock as I will be burying her tomorrow and and her family at this time in their time of loss. And please join me again tomorrow night at 9 p.m. for our Compline night prayers once again. Tomorrow at noon, we'll be offering virtual way, the Way of the Cross uh, on Fridays as usual. I hope you can uh, tune that in and enjoy a time of reflection uh, at noon uh, with our Lord. Remember that God loves each and every one of you and so do I. Thank you so much for joining me and have a restful sleep and sweet dreams.